Giddy up, partners. It's time to saddle up and ride high with Outlaws of Thunder Junction and the return of the fan favorite Gitrog Monster. That's right, the Gitrog Ravenous Ride is coming soon and is showing off how ornery he can be, along with the new mechanic, Saddle. Saddle is kind of like crew for creatures. Tapping other creatures with a minimum power equal to a saddle cost gives the saddled creature extra abilities. But the Gitrog here is a little different. See, he doesn't like to be ridden, save for anyone but Thalia, and has a nasty tendency to eat his riders. Let's take a closer look. This 5 mana frog horror mount is a 6-5 with haste and trample. He also reads, Whenever the Gitrog Ravenous Ride deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that saddled it this turn. If you do, draw X cards, then put up to X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is the sacrificed creature's power. With a saddle cost of just one, it means you can tap any creature with at least one power you control for Mr. Frog's Wild Ride. But ideally, you want to put your biggest and meanest creatures on the Gitrog, and sacrifice them for massive bursts of card draw and extra lands to put into play. The bigger the creature that saddles up and becomes the Gitrog's next meal, the bigger explosion of ramp you can get. With that in mind, how do we ensure we have low-cost, high-power creatures to sacrifice to the Gitrog? How do we get them back, and how do we capitalize on the insane ramp that we can generate? And how do we do it on just $50? Before we look at the build, make sure to hit all those good, good buttons, and subscribe to become a member of the Brew Crew to never miss a deck. Now, the really important thing to note in building this deck is that the Gitrog has haste built in, meaning we can get the benefit of the card draw and ramp the turn the Gitrog comes down providing we have a creature in play first to sacrifice. This means we want to be looking for creatures with high power and mana values lower than the Gitrogs. This is often going to come up with creatures with drawbacks, like Hunted Bone Brood, Lupine Prototype, or Pugnacious Hammer Skull. These are all creatures with 5 or 6 power that come down while we're still ramping to the Gitrogs 5 mana, and are on standby for us to mount up and ride out. They serve little purpose in the deck other than being fodder for the Gitrog or the occasional blocker if we really need one, but they do this oh so well. Once we get 1-2 to two activations of the Gitrog, for 5 or 6 cards at a time, we can slowly or quickly ramp up the size of our riders. Demogoth Titan gives us 10 power for just 4 mana and makes an excellent rider for the frog. So does Phyrexian Soulgorger though we wouldn't really want to cast him prior to the frog coming down, as that'll require us to sacrifice a creature in our upkeep. But creatures that scale off of the growing number of lands we control, like Old Man Willow, scale the amount we draw and get to put in play over and over. And that's starting to get pretty crazy. We can then try to close out the game with a Multani Yavimaya's Avatar or Uvenwald Hydra, which also scale based on the number of lands we control big threats for big ramp. We can build our own big beefy boy too. Equipment like Blackblade Reforged can allow any creature to scale with the lands we've put into play, and even putting it on a mana dork can turn it into a scary attacker or just another rider with the frog. We can be beefing up the Gitrog along the way as well, getting closer to a commander damage win. Roaring Earth and the new Bristly Bill put counters on creatures on landfall, which we'll be doing a lot of. This means we could be growing our commander's damage each turn, or just building up a new big beefy sacrifice for the coming turns. Death's Presence acts similarly, with counters equal to the dying creature's power being put on another creature we control. This means sacrificing a 7 power hunted horror can either make the Gitrog a 13-12, or turn a Findhorn Elves into an 8-8. Both really good options. Landfall can be our win con in the deck with cards like Retreat to Hagra, Zendikar's Resurgence, or Rampaging Balos, all absolutely loving us being able to put massive amounts of lands into play right away. But because we are relying so much on our commander, we need to protect him. On this budget, we can't put boots on him, but we can make sure he fakes his own demise. Cards like Feign Death or Not Dead After All ensure that if someone wants to take out the monster, they better aim for the head else he'll be coming back bigger and badder. We can also use the massive amounts of mana we're capable of generating to our advantage. 
In just two to three attacks, we could have all of our lands on the battlefield thanks to abundance. For each card drawn, we can choose land or non-land to ensure every card drawn is a land with the Gitrog's trigger, and then dump all of them onto the battlefield, and that is really powerful. And since the Gitrog puts lands into play tapped, including a spelunking in the deck, just in case, means we may be able to use that mana right away. But what are we using that mana for? Well, we could be using X-cost board wipes like Gaze of Granite or Forced March to take out everything other than our commander or our beefy threats. Or we could dump all of that mana into a Genesis Wave and just vomit our decks back into play, like a frog vomits up its entire stomach to clean it. And that's a true fact. We round out the deck with some of the game's best targeted removal, like Assassin's Trophy, now Budget, Bitter Triumph, or Infernal Grasp. Or even Beast Within, Tear Asunder, and Feed the Swarm. We can deal with anything that may get in our way or stop us from connecting with the Gitrog. We round out the deck with a lot of lands, because more lands are more good, and keep them all basics. We're going to be drawing so many of them that color balance really won't matter. So we just need all of our lands to come into play untapped and make green or black mana. Easy and better for our budget. If we are updating the deck, some pricier creatures that scale off of the number of lands we control, like Ashaya Soul of the Wild or Greensleeve's Marrow Sorcerer, are fantastic to replace some of our more vanilla big creatures. Bettering some of the removal, like with a Damnation or a Pernicious Deed, would be excellent as well, for those times we absolutely need to set everyone back to the Stone Age, with the potential to have enough mana to recast and connect with our commander the same turn. If you like lands, big creatures, and the Gitrog, this deck's a sleek budget brew for you. Let's just hope the price of the commander doesn't skyrocket on set release. If you like this deck, drop a comment and be sure to check out the full deck list over at my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world and makes it easy to look up prices and the cheapest versions of cards for budget friendly brews. While you're there, be sure to give my profile a follow. And while you're here, be sure to check out these other videos on the channel. If you're new here, you have to hit that subscribe button. And as always, good luck and have fun.